Today we are visiting Octala Monastery in the Lori province of Armenia. This beautiful church is my favorite of our entire three-week trip in Armenia. This church is currently inactive, but we were lucky enough to meet the priests who were there that day to find out more of the history of this beautiful place. The priests were able to tell us some amazing information about the church and some really cool history of when the Mongols attacked and took over this region of the Lori province in Armenia. During this time, they had lots of destruction that happened to many of the churches, including this one. Oh, like Temur was here when he entered this church, uh, saw that the church is empty, and heard a voice of a child crying. Uh, he thought that the church is crying because of his sins, the right. sins that he committed. Right. But there was nothing like that. He thought that people are hiding under the walls. Uh, the church has burnt talks so. Secret doors. Oh, secret doors. <laughs> <laughs> When he tried to find the secret doors, he couldn't, and start shooting, and uh, yeah, ruined the face of Satan. Destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah, in the middle is the communion. Christos. Under the Maria. This, uh, Christ is on both sides. Okay, he's giving, uh, Christ is giving his blood to, on the left, right side, to Petros. Uh, to Petros. Peter. To, oh, Peter. to Peter uh, Apostle. And on the left side, he's giving more I. He's giving his body to the... To Apostle Paul. Paul. So Paul. Okay, on the bottom there are uh, 25 uh, saints of ecumenic. Ecumenic Fathers of the Holy Church. Ecumenic Fathers of the Holy Church. God is. It's the second uh, coming. It's the last judgment of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Last judgment. I, last judgment. The It's a pilgrimage place uh, for people who are not having babies. There's fertility. Yeah. fertility. Yeah. There are rings. Uh, when we entered, you saw there were two rings. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, people pilgrimage uh, before USSR and after USSR who have like birth problem. I mean, fertility. fertility. <laughs> the church is also uh, called uh, a church uh, which uh, turns your wishes into reality. So your wish is uh, something that you wish for. Because uh, people uh, come here uh, with the um, wishes. The mission. I... Missions, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, come. Thank you. Merci. Merci. In 1887, archaeologists found evidence to be able to date the buildings back to the 8th century BC. The modern fortress and church was built on these Bronze and Iron Age foundations. The exact date of the church being built is unknown. It is accepted that it was built in the 11th century AD, but like the fortress, was built on earlier foundations. There are many legends and local lore that claim the church was built in the 5th century and the 7th century, but there's unfortunately no way to confirm. The second stop we made was another monastery called Haghapat that holds so much history. This beautiful monastery was built in the 10th century and was built on a cliffside that overlooks the beauty of the region close to Georgia. This site was a part of surrounding villages and hamlets and was known as a place of refuge and learning. It had been attacked many times over the years but was not greatly altered from the damages and earthquakes. In 1996, the monastery was made into a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The beautiful and picturesque frescoes that are painted inside this church marvel the first one that we saw, but I really loved the amount of the first one. This church is really beautiful and definitely worth a visit. There's a ton of history and lore that surrounds this place. 
and it is a large complex so you could really get lost in many of these buildings that it has. In the larger chapel towards the back of the complex, you'll find this cool interactive thing that you can do if you have enough signal. We didn't, so we had to use Gohar's phone, but we were able to get it. Welcome and meet a real legend, Sayat Nova, Armenian poet, composer, and musician. He composed not only in Armenian, but also in Persian and Georgian, thus becoming a music ambassador of multiple nations. During his lifetime, he managed to create more than 230 music pieces, but few people know that Syed Nova spent many years inside these walls of Hakpat Monastery, creating music with his Kamansha. Listen carefully. The sounds are inside these walls. This is where the real magic happened. <laughs> There's so many amazing ancient churches in this area, and these are only a few, and they're basically untouched, which is the coolest part. There's not very many visitors to this area because it's so far north, close to Georgia, and it's spectacular getting to visit them. While we were wandering through the buildings, we discovered this place with all these holes in the floor and we were so confused. At first, they were thought to be lavash ovens or to be a big room full of places to cook. But after research, I found that it was a place to hide scriptures if there was an invasion. They say if you go all the way across, your dreams will come true. Yeah. We almost made it. Let's see if Emma's gonna make it. Yeah. You were so close. Once we finished exploring Hagapat, we were off to find our hotel in the town below. We checked in and headed off in search of dinner. Only a few miles away from our hotel is a historical site and restaurant that we made it to just in time before they closed for the night. We were fortunately able to see it at a beautiful sunset time of day. The Zarni Parni cave complex was neglected and in ruins for many years until the new owners renovated it for the public to enjoy. The complex has three caves which you can climb up into and hear the history of how this fortress was built in the 10th century for protection and daily life of royals living in the area. There are examples inside the cave of how daily life was lived and interesting artifacts. Inside the cave, you'll see all this beautiful, clear crystal water mm -hmm. dripping down, and you can even take a drink of it. They recommended mm -hmm. that you should try it out if you're there. It's really amazing how these ancient people lived in places like this cave. And she said these are the noble people, the nobility. But man, what a view.
Just below the cave is a restaurant and winery complex where we had dinner and enjoyed the fantastic views of the valley. This was one of my favorite places to eat just because it was so beautiful and such a nice breeze on a warmer evening than we had been used to. There are also many events held at the winery and restaurant complex to enjoy, but the day we were there, it was very quiet and empty. That also added to the relaxation of the evening. Well, yesterday was quite an adventure. We stayed the night at a hotel that they were having a big party at, and um, it was very loud, very, very loud. We were pretty hungry and tired, and we picked the hotel because it was a restaurant as well, and uh, they didn't want to have other guests besides the party to feed so we found somewhere else to eat dinner which was so worth it because it was um, a cave and a castle in the cave that was from the 11th century or 10th century um, which was pretty amazing. So the party went until about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, Gohar and her mom were calling and telling them the music was too loud. It was, it was a lot. But um, me and the girls slept okay. We had the white noise machine, so that really helped a lot. And the internet kept cutting out, so I would have to turn it back on. Um, then after that, the, um, there was a storm that came through, so that kept me up a little bit as well, but it was also really nice. Got up bright and early and had plenty of coffee, and now we're on to our next place. This area is really amazing because it has a lot of old copper mines that are no longer in use, and they're just these dilapidated ruins, <laughs> different buildings, so it's, it's such a beautiful area. This morning we are very tired, but I'm happy we got up early because we have this beautiful place nearly to ourselves. This is Sanahin Monastery, and it is the sister church to Hagapat's monastery we visited yesterday. Both churches were made a UNESCO World Heritage Site at the same time. There is a bit of a rivalry between the two churches, and that's why this church's name translates to this one is older than that one. The extensive history of this place makes it obvious that it was a place of learning. Among the many buildings that were built in the 10th century, it also holds the oldest library in Armenia. The monastery was a place of spiritual growth, but also was a school that invited clergy, scholars, and writers to attend. This place is so spectacular. I absolutely love getting to a location like this that it's nice and early in the morning, and so there's nobody here. <laughs> like, nothing makes me happier and feel closer to nature and the presence that is here, this music, it being empty, it's just, wow, it's really amazing. Theology was taught at this school, along with many other subjects like philosophy, rhetoric, music, medicine, calendars, and many other sciences. This, in my mind, shows just how ancient and deep the passion of learning is for the Armenian people.
Next on our day of visits to monasteries, we head to Odzun. This beautiful church sits high up in the mountains of the Lori province and was built in the 5th century. The grounds were a relaxing place to spend an afternoon, and there are many visitors, including some local children playing soccer on the grounds. The atmosphere was perfect to show how well this community melds into the history. Around the side of the church, there is a graveyard holding many clergymen from the past. This massive monument near the rear of the graveyard is a funerary monument gifted to Armenia from the King of India in the 8th century. There's only one other like it which lives south of Armenia in the Sunuk province. The tomb of uh, Gabriel Aglihan. We're thinking maybe he was a writer or he was a priest because there is a book in it. Does it have a year on it? This one doesn't, but mm -hmm. this one has 1860. This one looks older though, it's worn more. Yes, yeah. you're right. This one. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are really old because they're really worn. That yeah. one is. After enjoying a snack and the water that bubbles up in the fountains on the grounds, we headed out for our last stop of the day. Fortress was built in the 11th century to be the capital kingdom of Tashir Zora Getz in 1065. Over the years, in its early days, it was notably besieged by the King of Georgia to capture his nephew in 1177, and later in 1239 was captured by the Mongols. This strategic location was also a connecting road to the major cities of the time. This city, at one time, had about 10,000 residents, but now lays in ruins and has become a beautiful respite for tourists. She's been happy the entire time. She's just so happy. Yes. Look at how happy she is. Uda Maria. This place is so nice. It reminds me so much of Scotland. The temperature is cool and everything's yeah. green and even Maria thinks uh. it's cool. <laughs> Excavation of the city is ongoing today and archaeologists have found amazing examples of coins, pottery, and tools from locations foreign and Armenian, which proves it was an important crossroads of international trade. When you visit, you can take the path to the buildings inside the city that still stand, such as a bathhouse, church, and even the remains of a bridge. This fantastic place is one that was on top of my list of must visits in the Lori province, and it did not disappoint. I was in love with this place, and it truly did remind me of some of the castles and ruins of Scotland. much for joining us. We have so many more adventures to share with you during our three-week trip to Armenia. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you'd like to see more of our travel content around the world.